A lot of people say, I like Ron Paul, except for his foreign policy. And that used to be more or less my position about 20 years ago. I was a young conservative, and I thought that as a conservative, I was to support military interventions when the authorities told me they were necessary, that I should support a vigorous foreign policy that involved the projection of U.S. government power all over the world, and these things were necessary for various reasons and in the service of humanitarian goals and U.S. interests and so on and so forth. I believed this because this is what I was told, and I knew I wasn't a leftist, so this must be what I am. And then I looked more closely and found out that this is not necessarily what American conservatism calls for, that the founders of American conservatism, like Russell Kirk and Richard Weaver and Felix Morley, who helped found Human Events, the oldest conservative newspaper in America, thought very differently. And I think a lot of American conservatives, otherwise well-meaning, have been sold the same bill of goods that I was. Now, I first started to have second thoughts about this during the Persian Gulf War of 1991, a war I strongly supported. Saddam is massing his troops on the Saudi border. His soldiers are taking babies out of incubators and throwing them onto hospital floors. I bought into the whole propaganda line, we got to stop Saddam. He's going to take over the world. Like I bought the whole thing because that's what I'm obligated to do. When they tell us we need to go to war, then I need to shut up and as a good patriotic American and a conservative, go along with it. Well, then of course later we found out that the Kuwaiti government had hired the PR firm of Hill and Knowlton to spread these stories, particularly about the incubators and the babies being thrown on the floor. And the young woman who told that story turned out to be the daughter of the Kuwaiti ambassador to the US. Meanwhile, the American media, as usual, simply shilled for all this and broadcast these video reports as if they were impartial stories, even though they were the product of a PR firm. Now, I don't care if you're a liberal, conservative, whatever. Nobody likes being lied to. That's, that's a little bit annoying. But the thing that really got to me, and incidentally, I am no leftist, never have been, never will be, I was the vice president of the Harvard Republicans at the time, and moreover, one of my books is one of the top-selling books in the history of the conservative book club. So I'm, I'm not some outsider who doesn't know anything about this. But during that war, I remember hearing about 100,000 uh, Iraqi troops being killed, and many, many of them being, being incinerated as they were retreating. And a lot of these troops are you know, young kids who don't even know you know what they're doing they they're they're there against their will and i remember thinking as much as i supported that war and my roommates can attest i did i remember thinking well this is really disturbing i mean these people here we are having bob hope specials and parades and so on and so forth and countless innocent people are mourning the deaths of their loved ones and countless civilian casualties as well I mean, people are suffering in ways we americans can't even imagine and I'm celebrating with a Bob Hope special. I, I just couldn't quite get around that. It just seemed inhumane and wrong to me. And then with the passage of time, as I read more and I read more of the conservative critiques of all this, I began to think that as somebody who opposes moral relativism, how can I support this? And as somebody who laughed at people who wrote for Pravda and who would search heaven and earth looking for evidence to support what the Soviet government's position was on some, some area or other, I was doing the same thing for the U.S. government. People, I, I would say, were sociopathic liars 99% of the time, but when it came to foreign policy, suddenly they were infallible. And whatever claim they were making, no matter how transparent the propaganda, I would spare no expense to go around finding some sort of corroborating evidence to support my wise overlords in Washington. And again, I thought this was, this was just good conservatism. But we don't believe these people when it comes to anything else. We believe them to be liars about everything domestic. Why do they suddenly become angelic and infallible when it comes to foreign policy? Why do we treat Pentagon press releases as if they're sacred scripture? Think about what you are supporting. I mean, we're talking about with this most recent Iraq war, at least hundreds of thousands of deaths, four million people displaced. Imagine your own child and an air raid siren going off and explosions everywhere and how terrified your own helpless child would be. 
while other fellow human beings are enduring this very thing in the name of purposes that are still obscure to us to this day. Oh, sure, they gave us humanitarian rationales, but come on, we're, we're not in fifth grade anymore. You have been sold a counterfeit of what was once a dignified intellectual tradition. I was sold the same thing. In fact, Russell Kirk, whom I mentioned earlier, Russell Kirk is considered to be the intellectual founder of American conservatism. And he argued, looking at the Persian Gulf War of 1991, that not only was this an unjustified atrocity, but that George H.W. Bush should be strung up on the White House lawn for war crimes. Now, are we going to call Russell Kirk, the founder of American conservatism, an anti-American leftist? Or are we instead going to consider the possibility that maybe conservatism has been so distorted by know-nothing radio talk show hosts that we wouldn't recognize it if it punched us in the face. You can't support this type of destruction of life and property and of all the moral values we claim to stand for if you also claim to believe in absolute moral principles as so many American conservatives do. In short, conservatives need to be just as skeptical of government claims made about foreign policy as they are about government claims regarding domestic policy. And not to be so eager to defend every single thing their government does. Since when did that make you a patriot? Tell that to Thomas Jefferson. To the contrary, when we hear Madeleine Albright say that the deaths of half a million Iraqi children were worth it, I mean, there's nothing conservative about that statement, if you believe in absolute moral principles. That was worth it? Well, then, the usual pattern is this. First, we deny the American official said it, because, again, our instinct is we must defend our wise overlords. And then, secondly, when it is admitted that they said it, well, then we try to claim that, well, the statistic is untrue. It's not 500,000 deaths. Of course not. And then, when it does turn out to be true, well, then it's... Yeah, well, you know, 500,000 children isn't really so bad after all. The excluded possibility is maybe we are being governed by lying sociopaths. And maybe my instinct to defend everything they do abroad has sucked me into making moral statements that are morally atrocious, that no civilized person should be making. This is what this regime has done to us. Don't let them do this to you. Be a real conservative who believes in real standards of morality and not just shouting USA, USA with your fist pumped in the air, a position that would have embarrassed the civilized founders of American conservatism. Now, if you would like to emancipate yourself from the destructive modes of thought that have been encouraged, by the neocons, by the fake conservatives, then I encourage you to head over to tomwoods.com slash war, where I've put a bunch of resources up that will help you rethink some of these positions you have been misled into adopting. I know I was misled into adopting them, and I am very glad that now I support the true position of freedom and conservatism, which is non-intervention and peace.